Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the collective for Monday, August 19th, 2019. Happy Monday. Happy New Week. I hope everyone had a really fantastic weekend. Um, I had a pretty nice weekend myself. I worked all weekend, but it was it was okay. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a general energy reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. All the information is in the description box below. But please keep in mind that this is, this is a general reading, but also time is, a, is an illusion and energies are fluid. All right. So just because it's coming through today, it's dated for August 19th, 2019. It doesn't mean it has to absolutely re um, resonate on that day. Okay. Um, these readings are meant to be timeless. Also, this is not love, career, or sign specific. This is literally just whatever spirit wants to discuss with us today. Yes? All right, cool. So let's get right into it. So um, as I was going through my, my morning routine, um, I get up, you know, I get up in the morning, I do some yoga a little for like about 15 minutes, and then I, I meditate for about 20 minutes. And as I was doing my yoga, I was starting to, you know, connect with the collective and starting to set the intention of, you know, bringing forward the best message for the collective today. And I started seeing pink almost immediately. Um, and pink is a color of uncon unconditional love, also divine love. And I was feeling like in some way there was some sort of, there's some sort of sense of love in the air. Now this could be um, love for yourself. Uh, it also could be love for um, a romantic partner. I'm hearing a divine connection, someone that you may be really truly connected with, are feeling um, quite intense feelings for, or maybe have been. Um, you might be in a little bit of a lull right now. There might be a little bit of a pullback of energies, but that's also connected to what this pink color is representing here. Um, I feel like this color of unconditional love is influencing a great deal right now so one thing i want to i want to, a, a question i want to put forward for you is how is is to think about how is unconditional love influencing you and your life right now so either that's um, unconditional love for yourself if you are coming into that right now if you're really focusing on coming into union with yourself also how is that influencing you um, in terms of romantic feelings or deep soul connection I'm hearing for another person? How is that influencing your life? What is it, what is it making you want to do? What is it making you want to change? How is it making you want to grow or express yourself maybe in a new or a different way? Okay. Um, and there was a song coming through with that and it is Bruno Mars's Marry You. Um, and it's interesting because I heard that song on Saturday because I worked an event where um, it was a wedding and uh, they had their own playlist. But we, the staff of this place that was working, we were working at, we put on our own playlist first just to get the ball rolling before they started. And Marry You was the first song that, that played. So I had heard that song recently and it was just Saturday, but I hadn't ever since, but since then, since that party and everything like that, I hadn't heard that song again. I wasn't, it wasn't running laps in my head. It didn't start playing until I was connecting with these energies and this pink energy. And this definitely feels like it's coming from the masculine side of things. So this is why I'm asked. I, I really want you to think about how is love unconditional love and I do feel like spirit is saying that this is a sense of unconditional love for yourself that is allowing you to even think of something like this because I feel like something pretty radical might be happening at least radical from a masculine or fixed energy point of view okay and I'm not saying that it, I don't mean that to be derogatory or anything or insulting if it's triggering you okay then there's something that you need to heal there but masculine energy tends to be fixed energy tends to do things a certain way sticks to the plan sticks to the order you know is making sure everything is running smoothly as and as as, as according to plan or how it should be the feminine is the cardinal is the cardinal energy the feminine will make a change or do something you know 
off the cuff or out of the blue in a heartbeat. Ain't nothing wrong with like, she's no stranger to that, okay? So it's kind of, what I'm feeling here is from a masculine point of view, there might be something that you're influenced towards doing, some sort of change that you're influenced towards making, some sort of direction you're influenced towards going in. Maybe it's towards a specific person also that might seem a little radical for you, all right? So that song, Marry You, in which Bruno Mars is talking about basically eloping or just like, hey, look, this sounds crazy, but like, do you want to get married like right now? You know, it's, it's something, something crazy like that, okay? And so then as I was continuing to move forward and I was getting closer to doing the reading, I started hearing another song, another song started coming through and it was um, Super Bass. <laughs> Super bass by Nicki Minaj. Now, I hadn't heard that song in a long time. I was sitting here, like getting ready to, I was clearing out my decks. I saged my decks today before I started doing today's reading. And that song started coming through, and I was like, where is that coming from? I mean, there are plenty of other Nicki Minaj songs that I could be hearing that, and, I, and it's not even like I listen to Nicki, Nicki Minaj like that, but why is super bass coming through? Well, super bass was coming through from the feminine point of view, okay, where she, so there must be some sort of counterpart situation in which masculine and feminine energies are, um, are aware of each other, um, and the feminine is just as excited and thrilled as the masculine is, all right? So, okay, that's cute. Um, so then I started shuffling and I was just like, all right, let's see if we can get a pre-shuffle for today. And I did, I got strength, but it's the side of the card in which you're facing the devil. And this kind of came out somewhat sideways. Um, all, it came out kind of like this, you know, you see here, it almost looks like it was kind of reversed, um, but not really. <laughs> Someone's having trouble facing their fears, basically. Um, and then you have the Knight of Swords, okay? There's some sort of communication that needs to be had. So, uh, also, maybe some sort of communication that wants to be had. I'm also getting somewhat of a, not, uh, a knight in shining armor <laughs> energy. Um, it is coming, Spirit is saying that's coming from the masculine end, but also the feminine could be feeling this too, okay? The feminine is no stranger to wanting to ride in and like save somebody, but... Um, but I'm I'm picking up that from the masculine point of view, you know, the masculine does also want to ride in, be the knight in shining armor, communicate some sort of deep feelings. Um, but there's, but the devil is, sorry guys, the devil is kind of stopping this or putting a halt to it, um, putting a little bit of a stalemate on it right now. Um, and the devil definitely feels like conventionalism, some sort of conventionalism here, some sort of ego, egoic way of being, um, the social norm. It, there may actually be people around you that maybe you've communicated a little bit of what you're thinking or feeling to them and they're like, that's crazy, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, d you can't just like drop everything like that and, and move away or some, I don't know, that, that I don't know where that's coming from, but you know, something like that. Um, but then on the other side, you have the high priestess and the high priestess is in reverse, all right? So either someone is kind of refusing to listen to their intuition or something has been revealed lately. Some sort of truth may have been, something may have come to light. I, but, and and I, can't, I can't really pick out what that would be um, other than the fact that it had been re it has been revealed to you, it had been revealed to you maybe a, quite a while ago, but yet you're still refusing to really believe in it. Someone, someone is having trouble facing their fears. Um, I also, for some reason, I'm hearing facing the consequences, but also someone is having trouble listening to their in intuition or trusting or believing in their guidance from the universe. I feel like there's some sort of, um, divine intervention or universal intervention that's happening here um yeah the three of wands just just showed itself and it was the side of the card in which oh well in this deck the three of wands has the emperor on it um and it was the side of the of the of the three of wands in which the emperor was facing us you can see that he's holding the world in his hands something and this is definitely on the masculine side something is in fact in alignment with your path you can't quite see oh maybe that's what okay maybe that's what the high priestess is also meaning in reverse um 
you can't quite see why something is aligned with your path. You can't quite see how something is going to work out, but you need to have some sort of faith. You are being guided in this way, says the high priestess, and yet everything is not being revealed to you, at least right now. That's okay. In time, things will be revealed. What you need to do, what is really most important right now, is that you trust your intuition and you follow through with the guidance, the steps that you're guided to take regardless of whether you have all the answers or not. We're not, we're, she's, <laughs> she's saying point blank, we are straight up not going to give you all of the answers. So you might as well just stop expecting that right now because you're only holding yourself back by requiring all the answers to something that you may not even be ready for. <laughs> you see? Okay. Now, not that you're not ready for the circumstances, but also you may not be ready for the answer. You may not, it may, it may actually be um, a detriment to you to know how something is going to work out, to know all the answers right now, to have all of the questions that you're asking be answered at the moment because that could stop you. There is a reason why you don't know everything. You know exactly what you need to know right now. So you really just need to, yeah, you see the Ace of Swords just came out, but it came out in reverse and it's the daylight, okay? This could symbolize, this could symbolize um, not having the truth, not knowing, but to me, because it's this side of the card where it's daylight here, uh, something is has been revealed to you. And I feel like, I'm feeling two things with this. One, you're kind of refusing, whomever this is resonated for, you're kind of refusing to believe it. Or two, you're not taking the advice that's given to you. You're not taking the guidance that's being given to you. See, look, here's the high priestess again. This time it's her back and it's reversed. But you see what I'm seeing here, because on this side of the card, you have on the high, this side of the high priestess, you have been let into her back, to, to, into, the t into the chamber that she's guarding here. And you have these two keys. I do see these two keys as maybe spiritual and physical. Wait, yes, spiritual and physical, or maybe even masculine and feminine energies. But basically you have the keys here, all right? So you have some sort of knowledge and yet someone is refusing. Someone's like, no, I, I can't see clearly when you kind of can see much clearer than you think. Why? Because you're, you've, you've, got, you've gained this new perspective. You are ready to gain some sort of knowledge, to move in a new direction. You, it's, like, it's like you've you've crossed the checkpoint or you've passed some sort of test, you've gotten past some sort of barrier and you're moving through something new and yet for some reason someone is really apprehensive. You gotta trust and believe in yourself. You gotta trust and believe in your, in, you gotta believe, especially since someone is coming out of the hanged man situation, you, you gotta believe that you are ready to move in this new direction. It's something you've been working towards with the hanged man energy. You're finally coming out of the darkness. You finally got some sort of change in perspective with the hanged man that was in reverse. And now you can move forward. And yet for some reason, you still don't wanna trust and believe that you're going in the right direction. Your ego is getting in the way. And this is actually a, 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 a big part of this whole transformation that you or whomever I'm channeling for is going through. You, you, you've passed the test you got your prerequisites and now you're ready to move forward. But now is the point where your ego is really getting in the way and saying, wait, no, this isn't right. Something doesn't feel right. Or I don't have enough information or we can't do this, blah, blah, blah. And you just have to work on silencing your ego saying, look, thank you for, you know, the concern, but I need you to sit down for a second and just chill out and relax because the universe is guiding us here. And we can't really, you can't see everything. So fall back. Yes? Okay. All right, well, 15 minutes in. <laughs> Let's get to the rest of the reading now. One more shuffle. And then we're gonna get started. All right, 
Now see the Ace of Pentacles is here. The Ace of Pentacles is here, is on the top of the deck. There is a brand new start coming and yet someone doesn't feel confident. King of Wands in reverse. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Monday, August 19th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm giving this three shuffles and then we'll see what we have here. Now, I am seeing purple. I'm seeing pink and purple, but the purple energy is speaking to the high priestess energy here. All right, so there's some sort of divine wisdom that's trying to come through here. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to the bottom of it, guys. One last shuffle. And then we'll see, we will see what we've got for your Monday, August 19th. Well, we'll see what else you've got. We already got a lot in that pre-shuffle and it was literally just like three cards. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Best messages, please, Spirit, for Monday, August 19th, 2019. Best messages, please. Okay, that's enough. All right, we have the Four of Swords and the overall energy. Ah, with the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is in reverse, though. Okay, and it's the side of the card in which the initial damage has been done. This feels like a blockage, to be honest. What I'm feeling already, we haven't even gotten into the rest of the cards, but what I'm feeling from the overall energy right now is someone does need to take a break. Someone needs to take a step back and recognize how their heartbreak from the past is hindering them. Blockage. This is a blockage here. Someone is caught in turmoil associated with heartbreak from the past. There is strong apprehension here, but the apprehension here is coming from past heartbreak. And with the Four of Swords energy, someone just needs to take a step back and sit with themselves for a moment and recognize that it's their fear of the past that is keeping them from moving forward, all right? You have the Magician in reverse, you have the Six of Swords, yes. You have the Three of Cups in reverse, you have the Ace of Cups, you have the Four of Wands, you have the Eight of Cups, and the Two of Pentacles. Mm. All right. I'm gonna start here. Four of Wands, Ace of, I'm sorry, Eight of Cups, and the Two of Pentacles. Somebody has the right foundation within themselves, spiritual foundation, to move on with their lives. And yet, someone is stalling, procrastinating. Um, keeping up appearance with this Two of Pentacles. This Two of Pentacles came out last week, and um, it was this exact side. Um, I can't remember if it was a pre-shuffle energy or not, but th this to me looks like um, putting on a show. This is, this is the card in which I was saying there's some sort of dog and pony show happening. And the last time I came out, I think it, it came out, I think it was in reverse. And I was saying that, there, that someone's no longer playing along. Well. In this circumstance, someone is, someone is stalling, procrastinating, keeping up appearance. The sun and the moon are here. This is a balance of masculine and feminine energy. This is also a balance of light and dark. Um, I, I, in, this, in, in terms of this Eight of Cups here, I feel like someone has the wisdom that they've been seeking. Someone has the insight, someone has the knowledge, someone has the understanding that they would need to leave something behind them. Eight of cups. Eight neatly stacked cups. Okay, specifically, sp uh, someone is having trouble moving forward because of family. Period. Even though this family, you may not 
have the best relationship with this family, whether they're blood relatives or friends or people that you're just really familiar with. Um, maybe you've even come to rely on them on, to some degree. But they might be toxic. They might be narcissistic in some way, shape, or form. And with this Four of Wands energy, I feel like there is, for someone out there, there's some, there's some sort of new home. You might want to change homes. You might want to walk away from a, a, an environment, um, a job, I don't know, a circumstance, a relationship that may have really been home to you. But yet it's time to walk away from this. Eight of Cups. Sun and the moon. There's balance here. Okay. So now let's go up here. Let's talk about this. We have the magician in reverse with the six of swords upright and then the three of cups and the ace of cups also in reverse. This to me feels like some sort of lack of confidence. And I'm getting that mostly from the magician. Let's look at this. The magician is in reverse. All right. And here you have the magician looking off into the distance, you know, out into the world, creating what it is that they want, looking out into this, the, to the ethers even, and just saying, okay, how do I make this happen? This just screams a lack of confidence to me. There's something, gosh, this is really, this is really kind of confusing energy, and yet I guess it's still making sense. You have the Six of Swords here, all right? The Six of Swords is an energy of leaving the past behind you. And also, in this deck, you have some two people that are emerging from a cave, and in this deck, caves are representative of, like, a womb, a birthing chamber, an evolution chamber, even, if you want to call it that, uh, a dark, damp place in which you can go to to transform to emerge something new all right and so again with this with this six of swords energy in it being um the people are coming out of a cage i feel like you there is a change that has happened you're emerging a brand new person and i feel like for some of you there's some sort of connection that has already started with the three of cups and the ace of cups but the ace of cups here i do feel like there's a, i i heard new love there's new love around you and that could just be the new love you found for yourself that's influencing some sort of change here but also the three of cups energy is giving me a bit of a union energy it's giving a celebration it's like you've met each other you found each other there's there's some sort of happiness here and yet someone is not allowing themselves somehow for some reason someone is not allowing themselves to really give in to this even it feels like that's weird that's really strange It could be, it could be that someone just isn't quite ready yet. That's entirely possible. Uh, you could be fresh out of this dark night of the soul or cave type energy, you know, this birthing chamber, however you want to describe it. You could be fresh out of that. Yeah. And not exactly sure how things are going to work out, why they're going to work out, you know. All right. It makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so now let's um, let's get, let's let's get some clarification going, and I really do want to talk the most about this energy here: the magician, three of cups, ace of cups, all in reverse, but with the six of swords upright. Okay. All right. Give this two more shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got here. I just realized I never turned my lights on doesn't change much. All right, it's okay. One last shuffle, and then we're going to get some clarification on this. All righty, here we go, here we go. Actually, yeah, that's right, I do. I want to clarify this the most. The uh, Magician, the Three of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. 
This is this Ace of Cups is. It, I, I am definitely hearing new love in the Ace of Cups, but also, um, and I'm hearing okay. I'm hearing the Divine Masculine. Okay, um, this mostly is a new sense of love for yourself. That's bringing you some sort of celebration, some sort of happy news, some sort of uh, happiness party. I'm hearing lightheartedness. All right, let's just get some clarity on this, please. Spirit, what is this? New love. I keep hearing new love, guys. I'm just going to let it fall out. The sun. Aw. Wow. Ah. Okay. See, I told you. I told you this was a lack of confidence. King of Wands again. I'm going to get more on this. I am. Um, reassurance that everything is okay with the sun here. This might is... This is everything... Uh, okay. Um, this might be everything that you've hoped for. And I'm laughing because I'm hearing that song, You Are So Beautiful. You, you are so beautiful to me. <laughs> You're everything I've hoped for. Whatever, that's the wrong key. But anyway, like, you, you get it, okay? Um, I, and with this King of Wands energy here, I want to say, I'm hearing it, so I'm going to say it. I want to say, take the leap of faith. It's as if you know what it is you want, but you're lacking the confidence in going forward and getting it. Now, also, the King of Wands knows how to bide his time. So maybe, maybe, okay, maybe you need to wait a little longer. Maybe see, take a little more time. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This Six of Swords energy, uh, this could mean travel. Um, I need to, I really feel like I should turn my lights on. Hold on a second. Um, it could be travel, you guys. It could, maybe, maybe someone would need to, I don't know, like, uh, travel across the sea, overseas, something like that. I literally just saw that in the Six of Swords. Because it's water. Maybe that's why. Maybe this is the reason why, you know, someone is having, it. this could be a long distance situation. Or it, 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 it could just be a really drastic change. It really could just be. Let's see what else we can get with this. It really could just be a drastic change. And yet with the King of Wands energy, there we, you see, oh my God, take the leap of faith, you guys. The Fool. Okay. All right. Three of Wands. There's the Three of Wands again. This, whatever change you're needing to make, you're destined to make, you're wanting to make for whomever I'm channeling for here, it's absolutely in alignment with you. It's absolutely what you've been asking for. Rainbow. Look at the rainbow. I, I never, know. look, there's a rainbow there. We could be talking about a same-sex relationship. But also, uh, regardless of sexual orientation, like whatever. The rainbow also represents blessings. And to me, and I, oh, wow, I had never noticed that there's an, a rainbow on this card. But to me, this is literally saying this is exactly what you've asked for. Like, trust the universe because there are blessings here. There are absolutely blessings here. The fool, the tower, the six of wands, the two of swords, and I told you, and the two of cups. Balance between masculine and feminine energy. Someone has recently come into some sense of union with the Two of Cups that is allowing some sort of external union to happen. Mm. Let me rephrase that. Someone has come into a sense of internal union, which is allowing some sort of external union to come into play. I'm going to clarify some more. I really do want to clarify some more. But I'm gonna use the Lenormand deck. Okay, I wanna because I wanna clarify this two of swords. Because looky here, you have you have the fool, you have the tower, and you have the six of wands. The tower is representing two different things. Well, not well, not diff, they're not two separate, but two they're they're representing two things right now. The tower is. 
The first thing the tower is representing is this massive change that you've gone through. All right. The second thing that the tower is representing is the next phase of that change. All right. There's some sort of drastic change that is happening in your life that maybe it might about might might happen or is about to happen. But I feel like this drastic change is going to bring you ex like strong victory, six of wands, recognition even. The tower here feels good. The tower here feels like whatever would be changing is, well, it always is in your favor, but it doesn't even feel like, this doesn't feel destructive, the tower. It just feels like it's just a massive change, big change. but a change that's going to work in your favor. I'm going to get some more clarity here because I want to understand what the Two of Swords is. I'm going to get a deeper understanding of this Two of Swords energy. And we're going to use the, the Gilded Reverie, the Lenormand deck Ooh, by Ciro Marchetti here. What is this Two of Swords? Indecisiveness. Unsure how to move forward. Maybe refusing to see clearly. I'm also hearing not seeing clearly, not knowing how to how, how to go about it, not knowing what path to take. Needing, needing to trust your intuition because I feel like at this point right now, you're probably not going to be able to see everything in front of you. Yeah, all right, they're saying just, just clarify with the gilded, the Lenormand. Okay, well, let's see. What is this Two of Swords then, please, Spirit? What is this Two of Swords? What is this Two of Swords? Please, here. There it is. Oh, shit, y'all. <laughs> wow, this is love. This may even... Th yeah, this is a divine counterpart situation. If you want to go ahead and call it a twin flame situation, you can. Um, that's literally just a label. And I've been saying this for a while, but I am going to get back into the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine readings, the Divine Partnership readings, but this is what it is. Big, big love is on the table here. Big love. I'm hearing massive change in residence. Underneath the deck, yeah, the maze. Oh, yes, the maze. Um... The maze is talking about um, how we all, what I'm, what I'm picking up, the maze is talking about how, you know, your lives have led you to, to each other. And if you're not in a position right now in which, you know, you, you found this counterpart or you have an idea of who this soulmate might be, you two are both, it doesn't matter because you're both in this maze right now. You're both, the more inner work that you do on yourself, the more you get through this maze and the closer you come to meeting that divine counterpart I'm hearing in right timing. Um, I want to read this. And then I think I want to clarify some more. But the Two of Swords energy here is this has to do with love. But there is there is a, a, a oh boy, we really could be talking about travel. We really could be talking about um, oh, we really could be traveling tra talking about traveling overseas, relocating overseas, or something like that. Because that the Three of Wands can also talk about travel. Now. What I'm hearing, I'm also hearing unrequited love is the fear here. So someone might be thinking, what if this really isn't true love? But I, I think it is. Unrequited love is the fear, is what I'm hearing. Card number 24. I want to read this, and then I might, I might get some more. Card number 24. Heart. Um... The form of happiness and love is simply drawn in my shape. I am your feelings and emotions. I am your passions and devotions. Just make sure no bad cards are around to spoil this, harm, this fondness and affection. 
In antique Lenormand decks, the design of the heart varies from almost biblical, physical heart to a kitsch romantic heart embroidered with flowers and other adornments. The heart is, the core, is of course symbolic of love and relationship. Here we see the heart formed by two swans, a bird itself symbolic of courtly relationship, monogamy, and enduring love. The heart is always a card signifying beneficial emotions. All right, so yes, I do wanna pull one more card just to get some clarity on the heart. I keep hearing unrequited love. Someone thinks that they may be moving into some sort of unrequited love type of situation, but that's not it. The feeling here is mutual between the two of you. Can I just get some clarity on swans, please, spirit? Oh, no, not swans, the hearts. On heart, just get some... Just some clarity on heart, please. Ooh. Aha! Ooh, ciao. Mm-hmm. Hello, sir. <laughs> All right, but this is the man. Um, this one, this is someone who's very passionate and very determined. Very determined. So I do, ooh. Oh, goodness. Marriage is on the table. Card number 25, the ring. I'm going to get one last card because I do want to round it out to three. Okay. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this. Oh, there she is. I was just going to say, oh my God. Oh my God. You guys. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I want to pull one more card because the feminine, because we have the masculine here. Okay, this is how the masculine feels. Very determined, very sure of himself in some way, maybe. If not sure of himself, just passionate. Passionate, all right? And so I was like, okay, this is how the masculine feels. I wanna see how the feminine feels. But I wanted to leave this ring here, right? So I pulled the ring, I'm like, okay, the ring is definitely a part of the situation. But look at what's underneath the ring. There's the feminine counterpart. And looky here. Oh, okay. So I'm going to leave that there. All right. Time is of the essence. Okay, let's get one. Just, okay, one last card, please. Between the man and the woman. Between the man and the woman. One last card, please, spirit. Just for some clarity. Just one last card, please. What is between these two? Dice. Ooh, yeah, this is a gamble. With time underneath the deck. Yeah, this could be a gamble. Somebody, you're feeling like it's a gamble? Chance? Mm. Rolling the dice here. But love is worth it. Love is worth taking a chance. If you really, if you really love somebody, how much risk are you willing to take? How much of a chance are you willing to take? Are you willing to take a chance on love? If there's anything in this world that someone would want to take a chance on, wouldn't it be love? Anything. This may even be a timeless connection here with this, with the clock here. Rolling the dice. Now I'm hearing Abba's take a chance on me. <laughs> wow. All right, so let's close out the reading here. With uh, an Oracle card from the Crystal Mandala deck, yes? This one? Or Crystal Mandala, yes. All right, here we go. Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Ooh, all right. <laughs> okay, we have two. We have card number 48, Goddess Freya and Amber, the Untamed. Wow. And then we have card number 49, Goddess Maya and Ruby Aura Quartz, Searing Presence. Okay, well, we're going to take both of them. 
48 and 49. So starting with 48. We bring you the empowerment of the untamed. To be untamed is to be true to oneself without condition. It is freedom, but it is not always easy. There are many belief systems, some of which are considered to be essential and beyond question to mainstream, society, mainstream human society, which would mark an untamed spirit as a dangerous or suspicious creature, even though that untamed spirit serves unconditional love. Yet to be untamed, it is the only way to Oh, I'm sorry. Yet to be untamed is the only way to discover who you are and live your divine destiny. Being in, I'm sorry, behind the clothing, the social masks and the stories you tell yourself or that t others tell you, there is a beautiful, wild, divine creature that wants out. Uncage that divinity and watch your wild beauty emerge as you and your world transform through raw grace. Wow. And then you have card number 49, Searing Presence. We bring you the empowerment of Searing Presence. This empowerment enables you to see truth unveiled, naked divinity in all its beauty and mystery. In your willingness to become present, you shall witness the truth that will set your spirit free and make your heart come alive with divine love. No lie, deception, fear or agenda remains hidden in searing presence, the ruthless compassion of which distills pure truth. With this empowering, you are going to see what you need to see. You are going to be able to see the truth that there is only ever love seeking to free, heal, and discover itself. You will feel the grace that permeates your life and assists all beings. All impatience, Doubt, uncertainty, and confusion shall give way, becoming soft like wax melted by a lit candle, and only the beautiful light of truth shall remain. Wow. That's beautiful. That is incredibly beautiful. All right, guys. Hold on a second. Because this... This dice card okay um, I, before I really end the video I want to talk about the dice card here because I feel I feel anxiety I feel uncertainty someone someone's still asking some questions well what does this mean well first of all this is clarifying the two of swords here Okay, this is why you're having trouble making the decision, why you're being, why you're feeling, or maybe even being indecisive, because love is here. You have counterparts. You have two. You have, and this doesn't have to. This could still be a same-sex relationship, but we're talking about masculine and feminine energy here. All right, you have the feminine that is looking out the window, basically waiting for her manifestations to show up, and then you have the masculine who's like seeking right who know who knows the counter i'm hearing who knows the divine counterpart is here he's staring right at her all right but there is a lack of confidence in moving forward why well because a, a great commitment wants to be made okay but then also there's risk there's a challenge here all right thought that was bridges okay but dice says i am the risk the gamble you choose to take i am the uncertain and the leap of faith the leap of faith the fool all right possibly negative cards to my right will foretell ill fate but positive cards will bring out a happy state are you feeling lucky well are you and i would say these are some happy cards these are good cards here the two dice provide an element of chance and opportunity, of possibility and the new and, uh, and element to being introduced into a situation. They signify randomness and a risk that one chooses to take rather than the clover, which means discovered luck. So you choosing to take this risk. The random outcome of the dice can either punish or reward and may influence the surrounding cards. The... Okay.
Hold on, sorry, I'm just reading. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So, um, uh, and so this goes back to what I was saying before. If you're going to take a risk on anything, wouldn't you want to take a risk on true love? It's the saying, it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. And with the Six of Wands energy here, I feel like somebody is walking into a victory. Definitely walking into a victory. And I feel like it would be a shame to not at least try or not at least take the leap of faith. You never know. And that's also part of what the High Priestess was saying. You don't know exactly how this is going to work out. So let's play devil's advocate here. Say someone does take a leap of faith and tries to pursue a relationship with someone. Okay, they make a massive change to your life. You move, you, you move from one country to the next, or you move from one state or, or to the next, or you move from one town to the next, or this major change has something to do with like tradition or religion or family norms, social norms, something like that. Whatever this big change is, you take the risk, you pursue it, blah, blah, blah. Things go great for a while, but then all of a sudden it crashes and burns, and you find yourself in a brand new place in a brand new state. Well, maybe, just maybe, that was all leading you to your next phase. It was all preparing you to be somewhere that you needed to be that was different from where you were in the past. You never know. Like, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying, you never know. The universe sees things from a much higher perspective than we do as a three-dimensional human being, right? Our minds just aren't that expansive in this three-dimensional focus. So you really just have to trust the universe and you have to trust yourself. You need to have faith that the universe is aligning you with your desires, with the things that you've been asking for. Okay? I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.